So there are a few things that you're gonna wanna know before moving to South Jersey. In fact, today we're gonna talk about the three best towns, at least my favorite best towns to live in, in South Jersey. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Kat Quarterman, Broker Sales Associate and Team Leader of the Quarterman Group, powered by Compass. If this is your first time to this channel and you want to know what it's like to eat, live, sleep, drink, play in South Jersey, then you are going to want to make sure that you click the subscribe button along with the bell so you are notified each time a new video is uploaded. We honestly get so many calls, texts, and emails from people who are looking to relocate to South Jersey. Absolutely love it. So if you're looking for that real estate agent that can advise you on the perfect places for you to live in, then you've come to the right channel and you've found the right team. So thinking about moving to South Jersey, then you want to make sure you send us a call, text, or email day, weekend, evenings, nights. We got your back when moving to South Jersey. So let's jump right into it. My first best town to live in in South Jersey is Haynesport. Haynesport is a small town, only about 6,000 people. It's located right in Burlington County. I look at it as the best kept secret. The people who live here in Haynesport are usually people who grew up here. They have family here, friends here, or maybe the realtor suggested them Haynesport because they were looking in towns that were close by and nothing was available. And the realtor said, hey, why don't you take a look at this in Haynesport? It's a really small town, great community. You get all types of different homes. You can get newer homes. There were many newer home developments that have um, been constructed since about 2003. You do have some townhomes, single family homes, you have semi-detached homes, older homes, smaller homes as well. So you get a mix of everything here in Haynesport. Haynesport is conveniently located in what I would say in between Lumberton and Mount Laurel. Sometimes when people are a little unfamiliar, I would say it's also located near Mount Holly as well. It's a short drive right into all of the major cities, into New York City, into um, Philadelphia, even down to the shore. You can get there very easily because Haynesport is right off of 38 and 38 you can get to the New Jersey Turnpike to 295. Um, it's a convenient location also for military who are stationed out of the joint base in Fort Dix. It's a very convenient ride along 38 which can get you everywhere. It can get you down to Cherry Hill and even further up north you can also take 38 to 206 to get to the shore as well. So Haynesport only has one school and that school goes from preschool all the way through eighth grade. And from eighth grade, the children go into Rancocas Valley Regional High School along with four other nearby towns. That's the high school that the children are zoned for, but of course, any child, you know, any resident of Burlington County can test and go into the technical school. So the Burlington County Technical Institute um, or Institute of Technology located either at the West Hampton campus or the Medford campus. Haynesport residents are zoned for the Medford campus unless there is a major that's only offered in West Hampton. Lots of outdoor activities in Haynesport. You have the Long Bridge Park and Long Bridge Park offers not only just a playground park for children to play in, you can also rent it as a Burlington County resident um, for your barbecues or your get togethers or birthday parties. You can rent any of the gazebos there. And I think the rate is like $25 as a resident. They have a trail that you can walk your dog as well. A really nice trail at that. And it's also along the creek as well. And you can decide whether you want to do a quarter mile, half a mile, mile long walk. Not only do you have Long Bridge Park, but you also have the Municipal Park. So where the Municipal building is located, you also have a playground for children to play in. You have tennis courts, and you'll see a lot of people, you know, there playing tennis. 
You also have a trail that you can jog or walk. You can walk your dog along that trail as well. You'll have a field where people play soccer. You also have a baseball or softball field as well. I know that there is like a, I wanna say like an ice rink, but I have never seen it um, operable, but they do have a rink there as well. They did build or redo um, a gazebo there. I wanna say, I don't know, time goes by so fast, but a few years ago, they did that there. So they usually host um, events. So there is a Hainesport day. They also have movie night. They also have bands that come, live music, that come throughout the summer as well. So it's a, a, a great place where you can bring your family, your children, and enjoy some community time. In Hainesport, they also have their own post office. They also have a community center as well. Several churches locally in the area as well. And because Hainesport is close to the Rancocas Creek, you can do kayaking, fishing. I know one of the developments, Lakeside and Creekview, um, has a lake there where a lot of people do some fishing. They also do some, um, I don't know if it's, I know you can't have a, a motorized boat. So I don't know if it's more like a canoe or kayaking, but people do have that and sometimes they go in the lake with that as well. I think the most important thing in Hainesport is that it does have its very own Starbucks. And I know that I read online that if you have a Starbucks in your community, then it increases the housing values. So Hainesport does have a drive-through Starbucks. So we talked a little bit about the different style homes. You can get newer homes that were um, built as young as a few years ago. I wanna say maybe about a year or two ago, there was a small cluster of homes that were built. You do have other, I wanna say newer style homes that were built in 2003. That was also a large development. Uh, you have apartment one. It's only one apartment complex that I know of. And then of course you have what I consider like the other side of Marin Highway. You'll have the older homes. And some of those homes are smaller homes, maybe 1, 1,100 square feet, but very cute, very nice, and still more spacious than you would think from looking at it on the outside. The second best town and probably the largest in population is Mount Laurel. Today is my real best towns in, in Burlington County. Mount Laurel is also located in Burlington County. It has about 60,000 residents, so um, a, little, a lot larger than, than Haynesport. It's also very centrally located. There are actually what I call two sides to Mount Laurel, one that's along Route 38 and one that's along Route 73. So both are very convenient to get to the New Jersey Turnpike and 295 to get you into Philadelphia, to get you into New York City, um, any parts of the northern you know, New Jersey or even further south. The website Niche actually ranked Mount Laurel as the 28th best place to live in. And in 2020, it was actually ranked as the top 50 best places to live in in the United States. You get a real suburban feel in Mount Laurel. It also has some newer style homes, as well as homes that have been around and built since the 1960s and 50s. Um, and those homes are beautiful when they are um, updated and renovated. You know, I love the character in them, but then that nice, you know, newer updated feel as well. So the Mount Laurel school system actually offers eight schools Six of those schools are elementary schools and two of them are middle schools. And then everyone feeds into the Lenape Regional High School. The middle schools are much larger than the elementary schools because I know at first when I looked into that, I said to myself, how are all those kids fitting into just two middle schools? But the middle schools are much larger schools so they can house all of those six different elementary schools. The other nice thing about Mount Laurel is that you have the Centerton Square Shopping Center. And in that center, you have many different stores, many different places to eat in, but the favorites are Wegmans, if you're a Wegman shopper. You have a Target, a Target there as well. 
a Costco there and the Costco does have the gas station that a lot of people go to because the gas prices are a little bit cheaper there at the Costco gas station and they also have a Costco auto repair section as well which I have a lot of friends that go there my other favorite that's over there in the Centerton Square area is Top Golf. So if you've never been, you definitely want to go. It's a fun place where you can hang out with your friends, your family, play a little bit of golf. Just don't fall off the cliff as you swing too hard and definitely enjoy some good food. When we're talking about parks, you have them as well in Mount Laurel. One of the favorite parks is Laurel Acres Park. It's a very huge park with some hills. If you're into jogging or working out, I've seen many different clubs and teams and just friends get together there and work out. You also have a lake there that you can fish in or just sit by and enjoy some you know, peace and quiet. You have gazebos there, some barbecue pits as well that you can enjoy with some family and friends, and, a, and of course, a trail that you can follow and walk through the park to get your exercise on, your meditation on, or just some peace and quiet. They have a few different playgrounds for kids to play in as well. And that park was actually um, updated or renovated and still going through a little bit of renovation, definitely by the sign, the entrance of the park. Another one of my favorites in Mount Laurel that I discovered by accident is that there is a private dog park in one of the apartment complexes that's right off of Briggs and Union. It's actually a really cute dog park. I ended up driving through there. It came up in my GPS as I had the dog out one day. And, um, and then when I went, I saw the sign that it was private. Private. but it's a really cute little dog park for um, your pets to enjoy um, I've never seen it very crowded but of course I've only driven by it a few times because I'm not a resident of the apartment complex but I thought it was extra special that they have their own little private dog park another amusement park I want to call it that's located right in Mount Laurel and to my surprise there are so many people that come down from different places from Delaware, from New York, um, just to enjoy this amusement park is Funplex. So Funplex, you have everything. You have the indoor, um, indoor amusement and also outdoor. They do have a pool that they got over the years. So you do have a pool that you can enjoy and water rides that you can enjoy along with the roller coasters and the racing cars. Inside you can do bowling. Lots of people host parties there as well. And lots of the sports, the youth sports, will host their end of the year events there as well. So another interesting fact is that Mount Laurel actually was a considered a rural area. All the way up until like about 1962 when Ramblewood, which is a very popular community of homes that people love to, to live in that community. Many of the people who live there have lived there for decades. Um, and then their kids, you know, move back into their homes and, and keep the home in their family. But many people who live there don't actually move. So if you catch a house that's for sale, it's not gonna be for sale long. But it's just interesting to know that Mount Laurel was considered rural until they started building up and they started building that first community, which is Ramblewood. You also have in Mount Laurel, Rancocas Woods, which is a, I wanna say a cute little small area of some very unique shops. So if you're into old books or selling your books or buying used books, they have that there. Um, there are also some, uh, I know of one nice coffee shop there as well that I've been to, really nice vibe going on. They did have a Mexican restaurant open up there as well and they have some very limited outdoor um, seating for you, but lots of little different shops that you can shop in. A um, lot of different artisans, you know, people who make items you don't have shops there so it makes a great stroll um, they have events there as well so sometimes if you're driving down creek road it might be a little congested when you get right there because you want to be careful about cars backing out from their parking spots and also cars moving into parking spots mount laurel 
is also home to many big companies. So that means jobs, right, are available in Mount Laurel. You have Bishop's Gate, which hosts a lot of different uh, companies in there. You have um, Comcast is located in there. Title Resource Group was, you know, located in there as well. Um, Nikon, I think, was once located in there. I don't know if they're still there, Canon. But you have a lot of different companies right in that complex. It's also near Creme de la Creme uh, Daycare Center. I know my, my kids went there when they were younger. And that is like the Mercedes of daycare centers, if you've ever heard of them. But um, I loved it there and it was always a, a, a job to get out of the Bishop's Gate Center just to pick up my kids you know during that five o'clock wash hour going home time so Mount Laurel also has its own post office it also has a community center and I love the community center there because they do a lot of things for the seniors they're also very involved in the Mount Laurel Day Festival um, and the festival is where you can see a lot of different small businesses come together, lots of activities for the residents, for people who just want to come to Mount Laurel Day, for the kids. They do a really good job in hosting that event. So my last best town to live in in South Jersey is Morristown, also located in Burlington County. And I want to say the population is somewhat in the middle. You probably have somewhere around 20,000 residents in Morristown. It's a more affluent community, so the household incomes are higher. And I wanna say the location is what I would consider like right off of 38. So if you, you know, you're you along 38, you can turn right into you know, in Morristown. Um, it's also not too far from 41 as well. So there is what I would consider sort of like a back way to get into Morristown as well. Has a lot of historic charm, you know, to it. And I want to say the downtown area is just really fun to be in. It reminds me of like being in Hoboken, New Jersey, where you have all these little shops that you can um, visit and check out whether it's to buy, you know, a clothing item or to eat or just to kind of, you know, visit. So I, I like that about Morristown. It can be considered a walkable town because there are many people who live like off of Main Street and they will walk to Main Street to check out all of these stores or just to hang out in the evening. I like it because during the spring months, the uh, children that attend Morristown Friends School, they will walk, you know, along Main Street a lot just to get, you know, a little bite to eat. You have the pretzel. So again, in Morristown, you do have parks. You have the Strawbridge Lake Park, which is also um, waterfront, right? You do have the lake there as well that you can sit and relax. And, you know, and it's walkable. You do have sports teams that may, you know, work out or practice there as well. You have the Morristown Community House. And there they host many, many weddings. Many weddings that you probably see in different magazines have been hosted there. You also um, may have some corporate events that are also hosted there as well. So they do corporate events. And I remember um, when they did a lot of that dining in the park or dining outside, you know, the dining in white parties um, or the well, it wasn't a secret location, but you had to dress in all white and, you know, you didn't have to bring your own tables and chairs. They supplied that, but you did have to bring your own food. And that really was a great event as well. The nice thing about the homes in Morristown is that they have like a Victorian feel to them. Um, very nice architectural work and design in the homes there in Morristown. Of course, many of them are larger homes, but you still can get like the condos. They do have a 55 plus community there as well. They do have a few apartment complexes as well that you can, you know, choose to live in or live near. They do have a townhome community, a small cluster of townhomes that were built several years ago as well. And those are newer, but they're very spacious as well. So just remember that Morristown 
is really considered like a dry town. So the only places that you can go and actually order liquor would be at any of the restaurants in Morristown Mall. But if you are going on Main Street and you're, you know, eating at any of the restaurants there, most of those are BYOB. And since I mentioned Morristown Mall, that was one place that I forgot to mention up front, but you do have your own mall in Morristown and they have quite a few shops there. Um, so you, and, and not only just shops, but lots of restaurants. You also have the Regal Movie Theater. They are building now, I think it's like a Cooper, some type of a Cooper medical facility there as well. So you do have lots of things to do and your own places to shop. Besides the Morristown Mall, there are several different little shopping complexes that you can shop in. I know right across the street from the mall, you have, um, it used to be Perkins Restaurant, but now it's uh, called something like a pancake shop there. But you do have uh, Marshall's there um, and a couple of other little shops just right in that complex that you can shop in. So there you have it. I'm telling you right now, it can be a challenge to navigate all these different towns and places in South Jersey and trying to figure out where you think that you would fit in best, right? Or what will fit you best. So all my team and I gotta do is just hear a few things about what you like or the lifestyle that you wanna live, um, some particulars about what you're looking for in the area that you live in, and we can make some suggestions on some towns that you can explore. But the only way that we can help you is that you have to reach out. So whether you wanna send, give us a call, send us a text, reach out by email, you gotta reach out and we'll be more than happy to help you find your new home in South Jersey.